Are you trying to pursue someone to do something? The answer is yes, nearly everybody you meet. Almost all communication is an effort to get through to people and cause them to do something different than they were doing before. Maybe you are trying to sell them something. Maybe you need to impress them that you are the right person for a job, a promotion or a relationship. But most people create friction when they want to get through to other people. They pursue, they encourage, they argue, they push. And in that process, they create resistance. But if you apply nine core rules for getting through to anyone from the book, Just Listen by Mark Galston, which we are going to cover in this video, you will do exactly the opposite. You will listen more, ask more, and that will lead to successful communication. So let's get started. Welcome to the only channel where you get the free PDF summary and worksheet copy of each video we make. So if you are not subscribed, then click the link below so you are all set. The first core rule is move yourself from OF to OK. Why do you think flight attendants instruct you to put your own oxygen mask on first before placing on your child? because they want you to get in control first so that you can help others later. Similarly, while making a cold call, handling an angry client, going on a tough job interview, facing a furious lover, dealing with insolent teenager, you have to get your emotions and thoughts under control for successful communication by moving yourself from OF to OK. Though most of the time, we know how to respond effectively. But here is what happens. A few minutes after a stressful discussion, you calm down a little. A few minutes or hours after that, you probably gain enough self-control to start thinking over your options. And given still more time, you start thinking, hey, there is a smart way to handle this. But by then, it's often too late. You have already lost the sale, alienated a boss or co-worker, or you have missed the moment to make a perfect comment or a great first impression. So what's the solution here? Speed is everything. In stressful discussion, you need to get your thoughts and emotions under control in minutes, not hours. When you do that, you move yourself from panic mode into solution mode. And as a result, you will be able to say all the right things and avoid saying the wrong ones. Rule number two, rewire yourself to listen. I'd like you to imagine an office assistant who doesn't get work done on time and often turns in work products with significant typos and other errors. Now envision this person becoming defensive or angry or start to cry if you try to address these feelings. What title would you give to that person? Sloppy, lazy, undisciplined, lousy work ethics. Now imagine that it's Monday morning and you ask, did you get the papers ready? When she says no. Instead of you yelling at her right away and complain, suppose you say calmly, why didn't you get that done? And the person tears up and says, I actually did a lot of work on them over the weekend. I was all set to have them to you by this morning. But my grandfather who has an Alzheimer called me last night crying. He said, my grandma had a major stroke and was being taken to the hospital by ambulance. My parents are both dead and I am the only person who can take care of my grandparents. So I dropped everything to take care of things and I haven't slept the entire night. I know this is not the first time I screwed up but it's been really tough taking care of both of them and sometimes I get overwhelmed. Would that change how you would think about that person? 
Certainly yes. Sloppy, lazy, undisciplined, lousy work ethic is blocking out what you need to know about that person's behavior. Remove your mental block. Yes, open your mind and look for the reason behind the behavior. Then you will be communicating with the person who is really in front of you. Number three, make others feel felt. Making someone feel felt simply means putting yourself in other person's shoes. One explanation for the effectiveness of making a person feel felt lies in the mirror neurons. When you mirror what another person feels, the person is wired to mirror you in return. Say, I understand what you're feeling. And the other person will feel grateful and spontaneously express that gratitude with a desire to understand you in return. It's an irresistible biological urge and one that pulls the person towards you. Despite the power of this move, people often resist using it because they hesitate to poke around in other person's private feelings, especially at work. But if your relationship with another person looks like it's going nowhere, making that person feel felt is your best bet for achieving a breakthrough. When people feel felt, they feel less alone. And when they feel less alone, they feel less anxious and afraid. And that opens them up to the message you are trying to send them. Rule number four, be more interested than interesting. Consider these two letters sent to you and find out which one of these two people you would prefer to meet. First letter says, Bob and I took the family to Europe this year. Unforgettable. Now we are back. Bob just got promoted to vice president. Jesse's soccer team took first place in the state tournament. And we nearly burst with the pride when little Brandy got standing ovation as the lead in the nutcracker. She clearly has the family's theatrical genes. Hope you are fine. We would love to catch up with you next time when we are in town. And the second letter says, Hey, how's it going? Nate and I thought of you the other day when we spotted an old junker that looked just like that car you had in the college. We are hoping to visit your town someday soon and take you out to lunch. We'd love to see the kids too. We always listen to Lisa's tip all the time of her performance last year. And it gives me chills every time I play it. What an amazing voice. As of us, the kids are fine, Nate and I are still working too hard and having fun. Happy holidays, we miss you. Now, if the couple number one invites you for lunch, you will most likely tell them, so sorry, we are out of town that week. If the couple number two invites you for lunch, you will most likely say yes. And that's because couple number one is trying to be interesting by talking highly about themselves. And couple number two is more interested in you. So how do you master the skill of being interested? The first key is to stop thinking of conversation as a tennis match. Instead, think of it as a detective game in which your goal is to learn more and more about the other person. And the second key to being interested is to ask questions that demonstrate that you want to know more about that person. Rule number five, make people feel valuable. Making people feel valuable is different from making them feel felt or feeling interested because you touch them even in deeper way. When you make someone feel valuable, you are telling that person you have a reason for being here. You have a reason for getting out of bed every morning. You have a reason for being a part of this family, this company, this world. People need to feel valuable. We need this almost as we need food, air and water. It's not enough for us to know in our hearts that we are valuable. We need approval from people around us. So identify a person at work or in your personal life who constantly creates problems. The next time the person complains about the problems, say, 
What you are saying to me is so important that I would like you to take responsibility for coming up with a solution. When you have some ideas, call me and we will get together and go over your solutions. I really appreciate your help. And also identify several people you value who might be feeling neglected. Call or text them and let them know that how they have made an important difference in your life or give them a power thank you. That's how you will start making people feel valuable. Rule number six, help people to excel emotionally and mentally. If you are trying to convince people in the state of distress, you are making the situation worse. This is the mistake that makes many hostage situation turn fatal and it can also destroy business deal or a relationship. The biggest key to helping a person vent and then exhale is to just let it happen. Most people short circuit this process during the venting stage by becoming defensive, trying to offer a solution or getting nervous and trying to make things better. Do not make any of these mistakes because like draining an infected wound, the job of getting a person to exhale isn't done until it's done. And when it is, you will earn your reward in the form of strong connection, which can be used to get your own message across. Rule number seven, check your dissonance at the door. Dissonance occurs when you think you're coming across in one way, but people see you in totally different way. For example, when you think you're coming off as confident, but other people see you are arrogant when you think you are coming off as humorous, but other people think you are inappropriate. So how do you check your dissonance? The answer is pretty simple, but uncomfortable. Identify two or three honest people who you know well and whose judgment you trust and ask them to describe your worst traits. Offer them a list and say, I need you to mark in one, two, three order the top three ways I might rub people the wrong way. The list of traits are mentioned in the PDF, so make sure you check it out. If you ask three people to do this, you will discover recurring themes. If two different people mark you as an arrogant, for example, then that's one of the traits you definitely need to work on. Rule number eight, when all seems lost, bare your neck. Here is what happens when you are scared or hurting or humiliated and still trying to hide your feelings. You don't feel understood because nobody has clue what's going on with you. And hence, other people won't be able to mirror your real feelings. If you are using anger to cover up your fear, you will get anger in return. If you are using screw you attitude to hide your feelings, you will get back, fine, screw you too. When you find the courage to say, I am afraid, or I am lonely, or I don't know how to get through this, the other person will immediately mirror your true feelings. It's biology. He or she can't help it. The person will know how bad you feel. And as a result, the individual will want your pain to stop. And that leads to a desire to help. And a desire to help leads to a solution. And the last rule is steer clear of toxic people. Here's the list of different types of toxic people. First, needy people. No matter what you do for them, it's never enough. They lean on you until they crush you. Second, bullies. The lesson is simple. Bullies come after you because they think you are easy prey. Third, takers. They are the ones who hit you up every day for a favor. For example, could you cover up the phone call for me, please? Take my kids to a soccer practice. Pick up the lunch tab, please. And the last one in the list is narcissists. These people are always on center stage, expecting you to sit in the wings and clap for them. They expect you to treat their problems more seriously than yours. 
there are three ways to handle the above situations. The first is to confront these people directly. The second is to neutralize them. For example, if they ask for a favor, you ask them in return. The third is to walk away and make sure they don't follow you. Start applying these nine core rules today. And as a result, instead of bringing friction in communication, you will bring clarity, which will result in a successful outcome.